Okay, so we are uh, ready to start this uh, camp. It's uh, nice that we have so many athletes and coaches uh, together in uh, in this uh, uh, para skiing uh, camp 2020 uh, digital edition. And we are extremely happy that we managed to arrange this uh, camp uh, due to the situation with uh, with Corona. And a big thank you to uh, Per Erik and uh, the Olympic Legacy Sports Center, the host, and also to the Ski Federation, Norwegian Ski Federation, the Norwegian Biathlon Association, and World Para Nordic Skiing. And hopefully this can be an annual event, and maybe next year we are able to uh, meet uh, each other. So we will try this uh, this year, and um, this is the first uh, session, and we will try to have it like an easy going. So if you have any questions uh, during the session, feel free to uh, ask in uh, the chat during uh, this uh, session. But before we start the session, I want to hear from the four organizers. So I think we're going to start with the Norwegian Ski Federation. Ulf uh, Martin Aune, are you in here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you, Jan Christian. Uh, Buonasera, buenas tardes, guten Abend, good evening, everyone. It's fantastic what you have uh, established, and uh, I hope that all participants, uh, by participating, also are asking questions, are really taking part. Uh, that's the best way to learn and to get to know each other. In these different times, we have to do everything that we can to uh, try to develop uh, our sport. Thank you, Ulf Morten. We uh, move on to the Norwegian Biathlon Association with Jens Scherben, the project manager. Are you here? Hello, Jan Christian. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Fantastic. I am really happy to be a part of this uh, camp and um, on behalf of the Norwegian Biathlon Association, we are really happy to welcome you to this uh, camp. Uh, my name, as you said, is Jan Scherbel. I worked in the development department in, uh, in the Biathlon Association, uh, also then in trying to include para-athletes uh, when they start. Uh, so we, are, we really hope that this camp can be a good inspiration and motivation for all of you young athletes, all you coaches out there and all over the world is fantastic. You said 24 nations is uh, participating. This is really, really cool. So I will just wish you good luck and hope you will have four wonderful days on this camp. Thank you. Thank you, Jens. And uh, we're also going to say welcome to Elke from the World Para Nordic Ski. Hello, hello, young Christian. Thank you. Um, I hope you can see me clearly. My computer is keeping telling me that I have a bad connection, but I, I hope you can hear me and, and see me clear. No, it's, I'm very excited about this uh, opportunity um, that we have now, today and the coming days. And um, I want to encourage you really to, to be part of this because it's for you athletes and coaches out there um, take the chance ask all the questions you have we have really great people on the, on the sessions um, and with a lot of experience that can tell you everything you want to know um, I hope so uh, by the end of, of the four days hopefully no questions are left open um, it would be really great if you could uh, yeah, post something on the Facebook group uh, and present yourself so that we get to know and get to know you and also see what great talents are out there um, that we should be aware of in the coming coming years. So going towards the, the bigger events. Um, and I want to really thank uh, the great cooperation with the with the Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports uh, Center and the Norwegian Ski Federation and the Norwegian Biathlon Association to make this camp possible and uh, yeah, I'm looking really forward to great days and enjoy and really be part of this. So thank you very much. And you, Elke, also should help us with uh, the questions. You will follow the chat during this uh, first uh, session. So uh, you just have to tell me when we have some uh, questions and we're going to take it during this uh, first session. 
And then over to Per Erik Marum from um, the Lammer Olympic uh, Legacy Sports Center. Can you tell us what you work with on daily on a daily basis? And uh, I guess I guess you're the man that um, made this happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Jan Christian. Uh, my name is Per Erik. I work in the project uh, manager in the Lammer Olympic okay. Legacy Sports Center. So I would. Uh, Share my screen now to show you a short presentation about uh, the Legacy Center and uh, why we are doing uh, international camps like uh, this. So um, hopefully the technique will work and you will also have um, sound on this um, first uh, movie that I will uh, that I will show you. The Lillehammer 1994 Winter Olympics. The best winter games ever. This, one of our proudest moments, gave us not only unforgettable memories, we also inherited arenas on which dreams are built. And the knowledge and skills to turn those same dreams into reality. Since 94, our Olympic region has hosted 50 European and World Championship events. We have arranged more than 200 World Cup competitions and have established the standard for all future Youth Olympics after the 2016 Games. This amazing multiplicity of events has provided us with a wealth of unique knowledge and skills, which we willingly and with great pleasure share with others. The best race is still to come. The perfect competition lies ahead of us. The ultimate match has not yet been played. The road toward fastest, highest, or strongest is never ending. Those who have come closest to perfection have shown indomitable willpower and courage. But more importantly, they have not traveled the road alone. Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center has been, and always will be, a tireless traveling companion on the pathway that leads to dreams being achieved both for tomorrow's champions and those who shall lead them on the journey towards the stars. That's why our motto says, train better, lead better, and share it with the world. Yeah, so that was a short video about uh, the Legacy Center that was uh, established after the Youth Olympic Games in uh, Lillehammer 2016 and uh, yeah our mission is really to share share competence to share knowledge between countries and uh, then we think it's perfect to organize uh, international training camps like uh, this especially because uh, our target groups are uh, athletes and young athletes it's coaches and sports leaders from all over the world and uh, as you can see we could see we have a slogan that says train better, lead better and share it with the world. So this year we or yeah, also this year we have um, been organizing uh, in total five different uh, training camps. Uh, we have um, this, uh, of course, the most important uh, today, the Lillehammer Para Nordic Skiing Camp. We we had planned to have a physical camp in uh, April. Some of you were registered there, but uh, yeah, due to the COVID situation, we, we had to cancel or postpone that camp. And we are really happy now to offer you a digital camp this year. And hopefully um, the COVID situation can make it possible to have a physical camp in Lillehammer, Norway next year. Uh, finger crossed for that. We also have an um, international curling camp going on. We have a um, ski jumping camp for women uh, going on. Uh, all these uh, camps are, of course, uh, organized in close cooperation with the National Federation. So we are also very pleased to work uh, with the Norwegian Biathlon Association and Norwegian Ski Federation on this uh, Paranordic uh, skiing camp. Uh, Today and this week, also with um, Elke and his her uh, team on board, we are really pleased also to to have the IPC with us. And um, 
Yeah, we had the first edition of the Lillehammer International Nordic Combined Camp for women earlier this uh, it's in September, I think, earlier this year. Uh, and uh, we were also involved in the, the international training camp for cross-country skiers that the Norwegian Ski Federation uh, organizes every year. And what we like to highlight is that uh, this, uh, these camps are much more than just a training camp. So, of course, the physical training is, uh, is uh, important and we really focus on uh, high quality on the physical sessions. But we are also really focusing on um, friendships uh, across nations. We try to, to mix the athletes uh, up when they are um, in place here in Lillehammer. And we also try to mix up the coaches. We have a uh, own, own um, coaches program every evening, like we also have in uh, the camp, uh, the digital camp uh, this week. We try to include uh, include uh, famous um, athletes, like we we also will do this this week to give uh, give advices and share knowledge in order to develop the sport. Uh, and um, yeah, we have different uh, seminar and lessons like we will also have this this uh, week, for example, inside nutrition. So um, yeah, that was uh, some um, some um, information about uh, the Legacy Center. And uh, again, we are uh, so happy to see you all here. Uh, I think, uh, like I said, about uh, 100 people has signed up good mix between uh, guides, coaches and athletes uh, from 24 different nations, all continental are uh, represented, I think. So uh, yeah, looking forward to an uh, awesome uh, week together with you. Thank you, Frederik. Uh, I think we just, uh, before we start with uh, the session with a Biathlon star, I think we're gonna go through what, um, Something that I guess you all uh, have uh, muted your microphone and the camera is off and the line is perfect. So I think we are, uh, I think we are doing something good there. Everything is working fine as long as I can see. And um, like I said, with uh, with Elke Gunderman is helping us out on uh, the chat. So uh, feel free to ask uh, questions during um, every session uh, the next uh, couple of days. So um, I think that's um, good. Don't be afraid uh, to ask your questions. So uh, we're going to have this um, program. Do you have it there, Peter? Yes, I'll try to. Screen and we can um, go through uh, some points uh, for the next couple of days. You see it now, young Christian? Yeah, it's perfect. I can. Uh, I hope everyone will see it as well. We have the first uh, session now with the athletes, and then we're gonna have the coaches at uh, eight thirty. Now with uh, Nils Erik Ulstedt and Alan Bjentegård in uh, the first uh, session, and uh, for the coaches uh, session later tonight, we're gonna have uh, Harry Lushinger, and uh, also something from the World Para Snow Sports Championships by uh, Ola Kjell in uh, this evening. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have the first uh, physical session, uh, so it's possible to do it anytime. I know you're from different countries and I saw also someone uh, that it was late night at, uh, at the moment, so uh, you can do the training at any time, but there will be a live stream at 4 o'clock uh, tomorrow. And then we are back with uh, a new uh, digital session at 7 o'clock until 8, and then a new coaches session from 8.30 to um, 9.30 with uh, different, uh, different uh, topics uh, every day. So um, I guess we have the same um, setup every day with uh, training, uh, live stream also on Tuesday at 4 o'clock, and uh, the digital session at 7 to 8 o'clock and then 8.30 to 9.30 with the coaches. And the Wednesday, we have uh, any, any time training during the day, intervals, and we have one session at the end of the day from 7 to 8 o'clock on Wednesday. So that's the program for the week. 
So if you have any questions about the program or uh, something you uh, need to know about the uh, physical session, just ask uh, here in the chat or send us an uh, email or into the Facebook page uh, or whatever is best for you. So we're going to start now with uh, the presentation of uh, the physical session one. So I wonder if we have Björn Christensen in uh, this uh, room. Hello, Jan. I'm here. Uh, nice. And, uh, yeah. Hi to everybody. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll actually meet up with all of you guys uh, during during um, all days uh, at the camp. Person doing a presentation of uh, what uh, to do in the in the physical session. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, we try to to make it easy uh, for you guys, and uh, with a live stream for sure, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. And and uh, there from from the live stream, you will get uh, get the orders from the coach, which is uh, a well known uh, uh, Nordic combined skier from uh, from Norway, Nico uh, uh, Kokslin. Uh, so he will uh, he will uh, guide you through the physical session uh, tomorrow and uh, and uh, another great uh, athlete from Norway is going to do the basic strength on, on Tuesday. No, he, he was a former football player, professional one. Um, yeah, but uh, for tomorrow, I am. Um, if we uh, we put up the, the basic uh, strength um, session. Just a second. Here we are. Yeah. This is uh, this is just um, the um, equipment you need for tomorrow, and uh, and uh, the guidance you will get from uh, from uh, Miku, and um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, numerous of of exercises done with uh, with just easy tools. Uh, your own, own uh, body and uh, and just um, the, the tools you see here, which is uh, uh, um, a rubber dumbbell. Uh, 7.5 is uh, suggested, but uh, just feel free to to make it as light or heavy you want. And uh, and then you need uh, a medicine ball, three to five kilo, or a dumbbell. And you need the power band. Um, to, or if you don't have that, um, then just use a scarf. And you need a balance pillow. Uh, and uh, if you're lacking a balance pillow, just use two normal sofa pillows. And uh, you need the sliding mats. And uh, lack of that, just use socks on your feet. Uh, Woolen socks is is um, perfect for uh, for the the session. Will, will, yeah? Sorry, Barry will also send this by email to, uh, later tonight, so they get uh, get the documents with all the information, right? Perfect. So uh, the uh, the session with the basic strength is is tomorrow meant for those who are uh, are uh, sitting athletes. And uh, then we have um, another session, uh, sprints for standing athletes. So, um, so uh, this is a, a typical session that we do in the Norwegian team, uh, the para, para team of uh, the Norwegian Ski Federation. And um, yeah, as it says, it's a no-brainer uh, sprint that helps uh, increasing your speed uh, for sure and um, we think that's uh, really important uh, doing a session like this um, in our training because um, because uh, you need to uh, to um, to uh, increase the, the, the maximum speed um, that you're uh, using during um, during um, a race and it actually helps you to uh, 
to um, yeah, increase the, the or decrease your time uh, on uh, on the race race course when when you're uh, performing. Uh, suggested for uh, for tomorrow, those who can ski for sure, ski. Uh, otherwise, roller skiing, but it's also possible uh, done uh, running. And we uh, we traditionally do this with a with an easy warm up, uh, running real uh, at, at a really slow pace, and uh, the routine is normally lasting thirty minutes and. Uh, uh, within the last five minutes, we are using a um, uh, hundred meter sprint, but it's, it's not all out. So we just uh, rise the speed from from zero up to ninety percent of of maximum, uh, and uh, and then just walk back to the start and do it over again for roller ski or ski. Uh, make sure that you have uh, made three different. Uh, types of tracks uh, doing your sprints uh, for tomorrow. Um, uh, so that you have uh, have uh, like a target uh, A, A and B for for the three options uh, which is mentioned here. So um, we start with uh, with um, three times 15 seconds sprints all out. We call it a dead start. I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's the correct word, but uh, but that means uh, it's ready, set, go, and you go all out. Uh, the first one, uh, if you're doing roller ski and um, or, or skis, then uh, do it flat and uh, make sure that you have a sharp turn uh, on your track so so that uh, that you get a split um, split up with um, with um, the routine that that you're doing, um, and uh, when we're doing those three, we have a three minute break uh, between each interval, and um, finishing those three, we're moving into next uh, next. Part we have chosen then an up uphill part, but th this is just an example. Use what you have in hand or uh, at at the field, uh, so uh, it doesn't have to be be an uphill. But but it's it's smart to uh, to also um, try to um, to um, go max with a with a with uphill uh, skiing. Um, also here a break between each interval. Uh, three minutes and uh, six minutes after the series and uh, going then into the last series, uh, which we normally use as a, a flat part. Uh, it's the in run to towards the finish line, and uh, and also here break between each ball is three minutes. Uh, just a remark about the break: uh, keep on moving because uh, like you have acid lactate in your uh, mus muscular system. So, so we, we try to wash as much as possible um, in the break. So that means uh, it's not an option to, to stand still or uh, sit down. So um, just keep on moving uh, towards the start or make a, um, a small loop and go back, back to the start. Uh, those who are running, is also a session that is is normally done uh, like uh, here described. Uh, the breaks are are the same, and uh, then you start with the long ones, uh, 80 meters of running, and then three times 60 meters, and doing the short one uh, at uh, at uh, 40 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, uh, 40 meters. Um, so it's the same same system. After finishing, then then it's it's. Uh, um, uh, 15 minutes uh, easy easy uh, cool down uh, with with the gear that you used in 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 the training whether it's the skis the roller skis or uh, if it's running okay thank you so much uh, Bjorn then we are all ready for uh, tomorrow's uh, physical session that's uh, perfect I guess we're going to start now with the session with a biathlon star. Actually, we have two stars 
today in uh, the first uh, session. Uh, three times gold medal in Paralympic Games, competing in cross country skiing and biathlon. Nils Erik Ulstedt, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. And uh, Erlend Bjentegård, three times podium in Wokuk Biathlon. Hopefully Hello. also here. Can you hear me? I can hear you and I see you both. Fantastic. It's uh, real nice that you have time for uh, this session. Uh, we're going to move into something about your career and uh, the beginning of the career. So uh, I want to start to ask both of you. Uh, Nils Erik can answer first, but uh, what was your important to your childhood? Uh, were you into many different activities? Uh, not really that many different, but I was, uh, from what I've heard, kind of hyperactive and doing being all over the place and climbing every tree around the house and falling down from everything running and yeah i tried some football didn't work out and then just started biathlon when i was nine and yeah been doing it since then and Alan? yeah uh where to begin uh i was very active as a as a child and uh, did uh, mainly soccer and uh, orienteering uh, in the summer um, i also did to did a lot of different activities with my friends like skateboarding roller skating basketball biking swimming uh, we jumped a lot on the trampoline which i have enjoyed a lot uh, through the years as a child um, and yeah summers were just filled with uh, a lot of different activities activities and uh, in the winter it was pretty much cross-country skiing, biathlon and um, snowboarding and uh, I did have a lot of fun <laughs> going uh, snowboarding so you could say uh, I had a was very active uh, as a child yes nice to hear and also to all of your um people hearing this it's uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat during this uh, session so uh, don't uh, be afraid i'm really happy that they have these two guys here to answer so that's perfect uh, i know you have both been into the um, uh, same team or in the same camps um, can you say what you have learned from each other during uh, the different camps you have been into yeah, I've been uh, lucky enough to to be able to join the the IBU, the the B team and elite team on some uh, for some years now, and uh, I think it's for me it's been just awesome learning from those guys. Those are the the level of the biathletes in Norway are is extremely high, and yeah, so it's just to to see uh, one of the things that I mainly picked up is that good. Is not good enough when it comes to this level you have to be even better and always uh, try to to uh, seek new solutions to become better and yeah being in training camps with alan who is maybe one of the most hardworking athletes i know it's uh, definitely learned a lot from that yeah uh, for sure uh, the most important that i have learned from nils erik is that he don't set limits for himself um, though he has some limitations in in his legs uh, i never seen or never heard uh, he used as that as an excuse on training um, he does the same loops as the rest of the athletes on the development team uh, on the shooting range he is uh, shooting standing shooting even though he's only shooting prone uh in the competitions and that just shows me that uh when he's with us or with he yeah when we're training together he just he's one of us and he 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 puts the bar this at the same level as uh, the rest of the group and uh that is uh, very uh admirable absolutely it is so uh uh and i i never heard him complain and he has a very positive mind uh which is uh, something we all can learn from and you agree in it <laughs> it's uh kind words from alan i must say um thank you 
But yeah, it's uh, it's one of the things that I actually, uh, when I'm lucky enough to be able to train with them, it's I I want to do the same as them as much as possible because that I know that's going to make me better. So it's it's uh, I think it's natural when you when you get put and get put in that kind of training environment. It's uh, yeah, it's just learn a lot from it. So it's it's a lot of fun. Thank you. We have uh, some younger athletes also in uh, in this uh, digital uh, camp today. Um, do you guys have any advice for them, like uh, getting into to biathlon and how to do it? Uh, what what's the most important thing? Um, I would for sure say if uh, try to um, <laughs> locate uh, your club if there is a club in uh, in your region or in your town that will be for sure uh, the first step uh, and uh, if you don't have a club or <laughs> in your town or in your region it's um, um, I, I suppose you could uh, maybe take Contact with the the federation in uh, in your country and um, and maybe uh, make them help you to uh, to to sort something out uh, if the um, I would say facilities or the situation is 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 not perfect to to do biathlon or uh, or any sport for uh, for that uh, sake. Yeah, no, just to to follow up on that and saying it's. Uh... And I think it's it's a it's a great biathlon. It's a great sport to, to try it for kids because you get to ski around. And the most fun about it is, like, of course, you could do cross country, but that's easy. You we get to do the shooting, and that's the fun stuff. So yeah, so it's uh, I would that's I'm 37 now, and I've been a biathlete for almost uh, 30 years. And uh, yeah, it's the, the fun part that's keeping me from quitting. So it's just. Uh, Try out and have fun and be curious. That's the the most important, I think. And uh, the key for the, your success is it. Uh, do you have any advice on um, on that part? For me, it's been, uh, of course, again, f uh, having fun, enjoying what I'm doing, but also being curious and. And for me, with the the muscular disease that I have, uh, makes me more curious to see what's able to do and what kind of training. Okay, what how will this training affect uh, me, and what is good, what is bad, and try to learn from that, and always, always seeking new solutions to to become better. And yeah, so it's uh, and I think it's I th I'm pretty sure that doing sports at this level has help me both on and outside of the of the field yeah uh, as an as a young athlete i um, uh, i myself was very motivated but as you get older uh, motivation might maybe drop a little uh, and I think that's one of my uh, success uh, criteria that i have uh, managed to motivate myself in in different ways and especially in uh, seeking development and development and focusing on development rather than being very focused on the results and um, and I also created uh, good routines and really enjoy uh, the everyday as an athlete i really enjoy the life as an athlete and uh, if you can learn and try to appreciate that uh, your daily routines and uh, the lifestyle you're living i think that will uh, help you a lot in the in the years to come to stay motivated and uh, and enjoy the sport I think we have a question here. Um, Elske, do you want to see? I can see it here, but uh, maybe you can shoot in. Um, I think it's uh, just a greeting from, from Perna Johannesson to Anils Eric. Um, but there's something I just want to also make maybe the, the participants aware uh, on, on the meeting um, or on the session today is that in the, in the note, 
aeronautics skiing, it's you don't have to decide which sport you do, you can do both. So it's uh, cross country and, and the biathlon. Um, and usually we have combined events. So it's not um, as focused as, as IBU and fist races are. So that's just as a as a background information. I think that's that's good to know. Um, but please free to type questions in the chat box. And um, yeah, all the questions you have to needs Eric and, and Erlen. I guess I have to go into, I guess you have some role models uh, in your early age and maybe now as an athlete, uh, uh, guys. Uh, do you have something you want to say about that? The importance of role models? Yeah, I can start. Um... For me, of course, the, you, you have the, I would say, the, the big role models like Ola and Abjorn Dahl, who has for sure been a big and huge, uh, uh, I would say, inspirement for, for me through the, my young years. Uh, but you also have the kind of the, the, the smaller role models, which is in your club and um, which are athletes who is maybe just one, two, three years older than you, uh, and they are also a little better than you. Uh, these role, role models have also been very important for me. Uh, every day when I show up on training, uh, I know where the, the limit is, the, the bar is, and there is always something to uh, try to, to reach uh, because you can see that the, the older athletes are a little better than you. So uh, for sure, role models is uh, makes a huge impact on uh, on my motivation, and I think it's uh, very important for uh, for younger athletes to have uh, yeah big role models and <laughs> uh, smaller role models for sure. Yeah, it's the same for me. Like uh, I think it's if the generation that uh, around me and Alan. Growing up, looking up to Lionel and Bjorn, it's 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 a, yeah natural. But I also have a, a three-year-old brother who uh, used to be a biathlete. He, he was in the development team for a couple of years as well. So so for me, it was natural just to yeah. He, I admiring him, the training he was doing, and just trying to keep up. And he was yeah really uh, fair with me bringing me to training even though uh, my level was far behind him he was always patient and uh, tagging me along and and that is i think is one factor that made it was very important that i stayed in biathlon and and continued even after he quit as well so it's uh, the meaning of role models is uh, i think it's huge for for uh, the, to keep to start and to keep with uh, with biathlon and Christian, now we have a question from a participant. Uh, Pablo Robledo, do you want to um, live on the on the session? Uh, hi. Um, uh, yeah, maybe Niels can say why he chose uh, between why he chose biathlon over cross country skiing? Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I started up with with biathlon when I was nine years old, and I've always been doing that. Coming into uh, the IPC around the Salt Lake City in 2002, uh, there were more cross country competitions uh, in the IPC circuit. We had some races around the World Championship and and the Paralympics for biathletes, but. And until 2006, seven, I think 2006 was the first season where we had the uh, um, biathlon overall World Cup. And after dis uh, discovering that, that we now have our own World Cup, I started focusing more and more on the biathlon and and IPC have added more and more uh, races, biathlon races in every round. So it was it was natural for me to focus on biathlon, uh, biathlon because that's where I felt at home. That's what I think is most fun. At least it's uh, yeah, it's what I grew up, grew up doing. And so uh, when I came to a conclusion after a little bit that 
this is what I want to do and this is why I want to focus on. Great, thank you. Um, also to, to Pablo for this uh, good question. Uh, and there's another one from uh, Francisco Javier. So if you want to unmute yourself. Okay, I think uh, I just read the question. So Francisco, if, um, if that's okay with you. Um, so he's asking, do you think there is an age limit to compete? I think in Norway it's 10 years or something for to start, I think. So for, uh, yeah, around that. Maybe it's um, also about the maximum age, but I guess there's no no limit. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Alan, how old was Ulainer when he quit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, 42 maybe. Uh, no, I, I suppose there is uh, there is no limit on the on the competition. Uh, you can be, I don't know, 90 years old. Uh, we have um, cross country skiers who are uh, participating in the Birkebeine Renne, uh, who is uh, 80, 80 years old. And uh, we have uh, small kids who are uh, maybe six years old who is uh, participating in uh, a small uh, cross country race. So um, I don't know. I, uh, I suppose it's uh, only how you um, put up the competition uh, that matters. And uh, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know how to respond to, to that uh, question, actually. I think that was good, yeah. No, thank you. Um, there's uh, Gary Steyer from Australia has some questions too. So please, Gary, if you unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my question is uh, about, about adaptive athletes who are learning to ski uh, in Australia. We are, as I've talked, we're pretty small uh, uh, in the number of athletes that we have. Um, uh, we've had one competitive athlete, and that was with the uh, the ADF Championships. Uh, we're aiming to build from there uh, under the uh, lead guidance, guidance and leadership of the Australian Biathlon Association. Um, so I'm just uh, think, thinking about how our athletes are going to train, how regularly and for how long each session should last. Um, we're very lucky to have the Invictus Pathways program on board, <clears throat> and they um, train athletes for the Invictus Games. Um, but if uh, but they've have uh, they've never had a a roller skier or a um, adaptive skier before, um, so uh, do you have any recommendations in regards to the length of training sessions? How many times a week they should do it, and if there are recommended um, packages for for the coaching? Uh, could I just um, uh, how uh, approximately how old are the the athletes, they're, they're adults. They'll be, they'll be likely 20s, 30s, 40s. Okay, I see. Um, Nils Erik, you want to? <laughs> yeah, um, it's a little, uh, of course, if you say it's, this is uh, adaptive uh, skier, so you have to consider their impairment. Uh, how, because for, for some, it will be a problem with their uh, disability, how long they can do an activity. Yeah. So that uh, so I think it's uh, for for someone who's uh, just started. I think I would have shorter trainings, but more often, uh, maybe not that many over over two hours uh, to begin with. Maybe yeah. just yeah, from thirty to forty five minutes in the start, and then like add a little bit more, uh, but uh, also have maybe. Uh, in this, in this beginning, four to five, uh, five days in a week, and with two sessions a day. That's um, a bit around that. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Elke, do we have some yeah. more? I think we have one more question. There's, uh, there's one more question from Peter from, from Ghana. So please, if you come on mute, and also uh, feel free to turn on your camera so we can see you.
Hi. <laughs> so, um, 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 in January, uh, we had two um, para athletes who were sent to Korea for our first ever um, alpine skiing camp. Um, they had a mini competition um, during the camp, and then our athletes um, won gold and, and bronze. Though it was their first time. Um, Ghana is a country without snow. Um, it is summer every day of the year here in this it's in this country. And but it got me thinking that you know maybe some of the things we have not been able to achieve in the summer Paralympics we could achieve in the winter Paralympics. And so we have really been thinking about how we could. Um, liaise and partner with um, countries that have equipment and have the the facility to be able to send these two athletes um, maybe a month or two months every year to engage in training camps or if there are better ways that you can suggest to us i already had some communication and we we they suggested um, um skateboarding to to us but you know also in skateboarding here in ghana we do not have like people who who skateboard you know so definitely it means that if we are going to pursue the sport we would have to send these athletes outside the the country so i i want some tips on some of the things that we can do or some of the conversations that we can engage in to see if we can couch any pathway for these two athletes because they have really shown like very um, great and keen interest in the sports and and want to push to be able to achieve in in that sector. Yeah, um, I would suggest uh, the first thing to do would be to try to uh, to contact uh, maybe some of the. Um, uh, the bigger nations um, uh, and uh, see if they have some kind of uh, I would say cooperation or some kind of program. Uh, I, I do know, for, for instance, that in uh, in Norway uh, we have um, uh, a woman or a yeah, woman from uh, Greenland. It is who is uh, taking part of the national B team. Um, and uh, yeah, she's getting help from uh, the Norwegian coach because she's only uh, the only athlete they have. Uh, so I do know that uh, some nations and some uh, federations um, give help to to other nations. So uh, the first thing would be definitely to try to reach out uh, and and see if there is possible to, um, as you say, to. Um, to I say make a plan or make a arrangement that uh, the athletes can uh, can come and train and learn and also maybe the the coach as well can come and uh, and uh, learn in another place from uh, your country. Yeah, I I I think Alan covered it all. I don't have anything to follow up with that. Or is there any other, uh, I say, person here who can uh, maybe um, help answering better on that question? Because um, uh, I don't feel I have enough knowledge uh, about this type of um, yeah, corporation and uh, and so on education. There's a great comment from Mark from from the US uh, about uh, the, the Facebook group. So that can be a place for for good networking possibility between countries. So we're going to post the link here again uh, so everybody can can join the group. And I see Mark, um, maybe you can come off mute. Um, you have an interesting, interesting comment here that could be beneficial for for the group. Did you want me to come on? Yes, please. Your comment about the um, hosted athletes from UK, Brazil, Finland and the US. 
Uh, yeah, am I on? I can see you, yeah. Yeah, so I'm in uh, near Winter Park, Colorado, and I work for the National Sports Center for the Disabled. And uh, actually, again, I've hosted athletes from around the world, and the NSCD also has a Alpine program, and they have worked with a number of uh, different countries. We have a lot of housing in the valley. In our community, we've got about 300 kilometers of groomed trails. And again, have just hosted a number of athletes, including uh, most of the U.S. team prior to Sochi, and other. And the U.K. team was over a few years ago when they were just getting started and trained here in our community as well. So we have all the resources available, not only from a lodging activity standpoint, but also from a coaching skill set standpoint. So um, I'll post some information on the Facebook page. So if, uh, Countries want to get a hold of me, they can do that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for sharing. You're welcome. Are there any more questions? Yeah. No, it's really interesting that we have this uh, this uh, this conversation here. So. Um, it's very good. I think all the coaches maybe can help each other, and um, that's very good. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, Harry Lusinger here. Hello, everyone. I'm here. He, he will be the guy in the next uh, next session with um, with um, coaches. But um, you have a you have a you're a scientist, and uh, I know um, you have. Uh, Trained with Alan in your uh, younger years, and uh, you I became a say. scientist, and yeah. Alan became an athlete. What happened? <laughs> we have to we have to add that uh, Harry and I have a history that goes way back. We were we were <laughs> born with three days space, and uh, we're uh, in the hospital together when we were uh, newborn. We went in kindergarten and school, and we have followed each other the whole life. So that's the story. <laughs> And uh, now I ended up in biathlon too. So um, yeah, we uh, I've been lucky to uh, to follow, uh, or we've been uh, lucky to uh, to share a lot of uh, uh, our lives uh, so far, and uh, and still are. And uh, and we um, I just uh, also want to uh, uh, exceed on uh, on what Alan uh, said on uh, on those things when. Uh, uh, when we trained as uh, small kids, we uh, we uh, we enjoyed the training very much. And uh, even though I have learned in uh, later years that uh, trainings uh, also when we were 12, they were quite serious, but we always did it in a very fun way. So even if we analyzed with videos and, and stuff like that, it was always uh, really uh, driven by, by fun and we were uh, a big group. But then uh, when I was uh, 17, 18, uh, and he uh, started to be more uh, serious and going into a high school specified for biathlon, I, my uh, strength on my uh, uh, glasses, they went stronger and stronger. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> uh, going into more of the theoretical side. So uh, that's what happened. But uh, I, I, I am uh, still lucky to follow biathlon. So. Uh, uh, I'm really happy with uh, my choice, but uh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't that good as uh, Al was. You want to hear from Alan as well? Is this uh, <laughs> correct? <laughs> uh, it's not uh, entirely true that uh, what he says that he uh, he beat me a lot when we were uh, were child uh, or when we were younger. Uh, he has uh, had a great uh, potential and a great uh, talent, and uh, maybe uh, there was uh, some, uh, I say, coincidence that uh, maybe uh, I ended up as an athlete and he as a scientist. But um, and and that's also a, a big part of life as well. Uh, that uh, uh, you can't plan everything. And um, and 
yeah, it's uh, it's hard to give a very difficult to give a good answer of uh, how things ended up uh, as it uh, as, it, as it has been because uh, as I'm trying to say, we we both were as pretty much at the at the same level, but. Uh, Maybe I had uh, a little more interesting uh, interest in being an athlete, and maybe he, Hari, had an interest on something else. And also, in between that, we have a lot of coincidence, like injuries and sickness and motivations and a lot of factors. So, uh, yeah, uh, I really can't uh, <laughs> say why, but uh, yeah, I'm glad we still uh, have a. Uh, work together uh, both as colleagues and as friends. Mm. I also must say uh, that um, having a scientist in the in the biathlon association like Harry, Harry with his background as a biathlete and he understands and knows the sport like we do helps us a lot because you can there's a lot of there's a lot of smart people, but uh, who who can help a lot. But having the the understanding, understanding that we of what we do, it uh, makes it a lot better. So uh, yeah, it's it's good to have Harry, Harry on the team. Thank you so much. Uh, I think the time is about to run up for us, but we're gonna see more to Harry at eight thirty. Then I'm gonna introduce you big time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good, and I just want to say uh, thank you to Erden and Nils Erik. It's been fantastic, and thank you so much for taking time to this. Just now, some days ahead of the start of the season. So, um, thank you very much, and good luck for the season. Thank you. Thank for, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. So, bye. Thank you. And we're going to continue now and um, end this uh, first session with um, a photo competition. Nils, uh, hi, Pererik, are you there? Yeah, I am there, yeah. <laughs> Good. You are in charge of the photo competition. Yeah, or um, together with Elke, we have um, <laughs> looked at, uh, at uh, these uh, awesome uh, pictures we have got in already today. So, um, I will soon share the screen and uh, we will announce the winning picture of today. But um, first, I will announce the prizes for the photo competition uh, during this uh, weekend. And we have some. Uh, uh, sorry, I just need to um, to adjust my uh, video. I think. Good, really good pictures. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so really great to see. Yeah, sure it was. And uh, so we have, uh, of course, as a legacy center, we have some Olympic effects that the winning, uh, the winners of today will have, and also the upcoming days. So we have the mascot from the 2016 the Youth Olympic Games, and we have the Olympic torch for the Olympics and Paralympics in uh, '94 here in Nilhammer. We'll also add in some uh, some neck warmers there. Um, so uh, make sure that you also uh, or that you attend the competition tomorrow. Uh, then I will uh, will try to get up the pictures here, uh, Elke, so we can uh, first see some of the pictures we got in uh, for today. And. The winner is from Finland, and it's uh, Rudolf uh, Klemeti. What can we say about this picture, Elke? Yeah, it's a great yeah, so, one. Um, yeah, so Rudolf uh, uh, sent us this picture, which uh, I think is, is really is really great, and probably shows him as a, as a young athlete just starting the sport. Um, and also, he made a really nice uh presenting himself and um talk about his favorite um events and um so yeah congratulations to to rudolf thanks for for submitting this great picture you're the winner of the first photo challenge yeah so you will uh, receive the prizes i'll take contact with you and uh, we have another competition for tomorrow and the team tomorrow will be the best 
photo from the workout you're doing tomorrow. So make sure you have a, you take a picture from either the live uh, session or the session you do by your own and uh, share it on uh, our Instagram account. I will share the, um, the link in the chat now. Make sure you, you follow us there to also get uh, updated information about uh, the camp during the weekend. And also the Facebook uh, page is, of course, uh, important uh, there. And uh, remember the best picture of the whole week we we'll get the free access for a physical camp, hopefully in 2021. So uh, yeah, looking forward to um, even more great pictures in the upcoming uh, days, aren't we, Elke? No, very good. Now I'm looking really forward to it, and it's uh, has been already great what we received. The sure. sessions will be very even, even better. Great. Thank you for for a great session today. Good. Thank you as well, um, Fredrik and Elke. Uh, big thank you to all of you. Uh, very good questions, interesting uh, discussion during this uh, first session. And uh, good luck uh, for tomorrow and uh, the session at 4 o'clock or during the day uh, for you. So um, we have this live stream at 4 o'clock, as Fredrik uh, said. And we see you all again at 7 o'clock tomorrow. 8.30 today, in about 25 minutes, we continue with the coaches session. So, so all coaches, they will uh, soon receive a link from me for a new new meeting link for the coaches meeting in 25 minutes. Super, thank you so much. See you. And good night.